Guys, put your mask on, please. Yes, we're, we're coming out. We'll be out there. Uh, Andrew, could you hold your horn for a second? And let me see, you turn toward me a little bit more. Yeah, let's go like that on this one. Yeah, that's great. Elise, uh, could you turn a little bit toward me? Yeah, play this one this way. Social distancing, it's a difficult concept with music because music is so collaborative. We rely on each other's movements, being able to hear each other breathe. That's what allows us to play together. Even in the same room, we are separated by 20 feet. It was very difficult for us. It's amazing, it, it, it really is, uh, to, to play together. Okay, this looks good, this framing is good. I'm gonna call on Maestro's phone and we're gonna start the interview. The fact that I'm talking to you right at the moment from the Baltic coast, I'm connecting with musicians in LA, performance of, of a piece by Copeland, I think that's a little sort of a miracle, really. Obviously, we do have the technology that makes it possible, but also, more importantly, we have the will. The situation that we're in right now creates a bit of an odd recording and performing uh, setting in which we're each recording individually. This time is clearly a test for humanity, and we have to have hope and empathy for others. I think that one of the powerful things about the piece that we're playing is that this piece was written with those same sentiments for humanity. The arts are what can give us hope and faith and bond us to each other. If ever we needed hope, now is that time. I was one day in school and we got an email saying that we had to leave because of the coronavirus. So I found myself packing all my belongings and the next day I was on the last plane coming to Spain with everything. And I found out I'm not even coming back to school for my graduation. So I didn't even get to say a proper goodbye to all my friends and faculty and, and colleagues. I got home two months ago and I just graduated online. I spent the, the past six years of my life there and it was such a special time for me. Just one, six wonderful years of my life. This whole pandemic has been really hard on me and most of my colleagues that I've talked to. Uh, it's really depressing because we don't know how long it's gonna last and we don't know when we're gonna go back to work. Since I lived in an apartment, I've resorted to playing in my closet because I don't wanna disturb the neighbors and they don't always appreciate a French horn performance in the middle of the day. The coronavirus is forcing us to teach from home. We are forced to adjust to time zones. We are forced to adjust to internet, quality of sound. Uh, we are forced to use technology, which is a great help. And this is a great result. It means that the students are really focused and students are very serious. And every one of us is also very dedicated with lots of love to keep going for the students. We've just emerged from our recording session. Very strange experience. The piano is about 15 feet away. The zipper hall is like a cathedral and with nobody in it, the, the, the reverberation is quite uh, a factor. Right, how yeah. was it playing it with missing instruments? <laughs> Let me just put it this way. You were very much missed. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I get so used to the uh, wind players uh, breathe and the way that they begin phrases, you notice something when it's not there. But also it's fascinating because without the clarinet line, it, it, it magnifies all the wonderful uh, harmonic structure underneath. And certainly the first time I've had to do anything like this. You and Mr. Bedini have been my coaches for chamber music in the past few years during my time at, mm. at Colburn. So it really is a huge honor for me. Of course, it's not the same, but I think it's really nice that despite everything that's going on in the world right now and all the concert halls are closed and I think people and humanity need music in their lives. So I think it's really nice that 
we can at least do this in this way and, and reach our audiences in a different way than what we're used to, but we can still make music together and share it with people. I mean, you think of this piece, it's been in the repertoire for over a hundred years. What we've been through, mankind, those decades, the music was always there to enrich and support and for us to, to, to absorb ourselves in. And, and this deeply personal late Brahms work is, is there to touch us and to perhaps help us in, in a way with its eloquence or the lyricism and, and profound meaning.
music is quintessential to the understanding of our world and quintessential to finding a path as a person in this world. Uh, it helps us to not just expand our horizon, but to actually connect important elements of our lives. Um, music is more than just an entertaining evening. It's an intrinsically and very basic human thing. Music brings us together, and it brings us together in good times, but it especially brings us together in bad times. It's one of the first things that people do when they grieve, when there's war, when there are atrocities. Um, people come, come together and they, they sing. And this is a cathartic experience. It's therapy for your soul. And that we can still use technology to be able to bring a kind of peace, a kind of break from all of the madness of these current events and to share in a collective experience uh, a form of music, although we're not in the same room, we're on the same screen, but um, it is still a form of connecting. I'm sitting here 400 years later singing Monteverdi and Handel, and there's a reason why classical music has withstood that test. These moments are sad, these moments are wistful, and this piece speaks to those feelings, to to feeling sadness and pain, but also beauty in that pain. When I think of the Colburn School and the legacy that Richard Colburn left behind, I think of 
one of the greatest gifts that you could leave as a philanthropist and as a lover of music is your personal investment in its future. The Colburn School of Music started out as a communal project and gradually it grew into a, a top level international school. Despite this transformation and expansion of the, the original mission of the school, one thing remains and that is that people come together to play music together and create something that is greater than the sum of its parts. The Kaladar String Quartet was formed at the Colburn School in downtown Los Angeles. We came together around 2010 and we realized we had something special, not just in our approach to music, but I think also as friends, as colleagues. And go. During this incredibly strange and unnerving time of COVID-19 that we're in right now, I'm based in New York City with my quartet and I have left New York. I'm at my brother's house in Phoenix, Arizona. You can see I have adopted a little bit of a quarantine isolation beard here that's probably unfamiliar to the faculty at Colburn watching this. At Colburn, I'd say I performed solo at least once or twice a week. And that made a huge difference in my ability to stay relaxed because I had a lot of time to practice that in front of my peers. And to play in front of your peers and faculty is definitely a unique type of audience that you don't actually encounter when you're playing on the concert circuit. And it's really good training because it's not often that everyone in the audience has played the piece that you're playing that night. Through this time, if we look back to what we were given by Mendelssohn, he was only 16 years old when he wrote this octet. And just to think what's happened in the world since then, we've just unbelievable things that the world has overcome. And we are here performing it over the internet with this amazing technology. And I think with all of this music that's been passed down to us from our teachers at Colburn to us, and even with the quartets, we have two generations of Colburn students. It's pretty amazing what we have. The Viano String Quartet has been around since 2015, and we're basically a product of the Colburn School. So we're really lucky that our professors saw that we would work well together and um, made the move to form a group with the four of us. I think our desire as musicians is to share our music in whatever way possible. In any particular case, such as this one, where playing a live concert isn't the possibility, then we look towards any possibility to share our music, because ultimately that is the most important thing. The process for trying to figure out how to put this Mendelssohn octet together has really been a journey. It's been a little scary trying to figure out how to layer everyone together and get everything super tight knit. Really such a big project and uh, you know on this great scale and especially the, a piece like the Mendelssohn octet which is full of joy and full of life. And we've been wanting an opportunity to collaborate with the Calder String Quartet for a very long time, especially because you know, they were also from Colburn. And I think this especially, it's not exactly the way we had it in our head, but for us, it's still a really, really special opportunity to be able to play this music with them, even though we could be thousands of miles apart from each other.
My parents found Colburn. When I first came here, I was seven years old, and I'll never forget when we came and took a tour of the building and understood what classes I could take, and they enrolled me in um, theory classes, classical piano classes, and jazz classes. You know, we had to bring songs in and play as a group. It, that band is also the first time that I started composing. I started writing things for our ensemble to play at performances. Really, the love for jazz and the, the deep understanding of it came from coming to this school. You know, I, I spent at least two or three days a week here for 10 years of my life. And so this place felt very much like home. Disney Hall hadn't been built yet. Broad Museum wasn't here. And we had the Music Center, but energy for the performing arts in, in this space was, I feel like, just getting started. And then they built Disney Hall and Colburn adding the conservatory aspect really helps lift this whole base because it really made it so that now you have a breeding ground for great musicians. It's not just great musicians coming to visit this area. It's like this is where the great musicians come to develop themselves, come to grow and learn and live, and then at some point, you know, perform. Being a composer for film and TV, I mean, that's kind of like become where I spend most of my time these days. Times like this, what we usually do is try to put our emotions or all of our feeling into our music or into some sort of artistic statement. When you see musicians play is who they are. What we want to do always is find students with great talent and then help them develop the talent and in so doing, their character comes out. To be able to recommend Jasper and David to Christopher, the reason that it can work is that they they can play. And it's really cool to see just how professional they are. You know, I think it's funny that uh, I had to keep reminding myself that these guys are in high school just because of not only the way that they play, but also the way that they carry themselves. They were actually the ones that suggested Monk. We played the song Evidence and even throw things at them while we were here playing through it. I was like, Jasper, why don't you do an introduction? Like, that might be a nice way to start. Thank you.
Colburn is a place where music and art and dance all come together into this one very rich environment that feeds and inspires every artist that walks into the campus. The second James and I walked on to the grounds of the school, we knew it was a place we wanted to be. Because you guys are quarantined together, we can do a beautiful duet with you guys. Does anybody have any questions or need to go over anything before? We are alone in our houses, um, and a lot of them are dancing in their bedrooms or their kitchens or their living rooms, but they're all part of this global dance family very connected together as they experience this yeah, this definitely. new way of dancing at home. It's been a beautiful experience actually to see these students still coming into our virtual studios to study every day and to see their hard work. There's been a lot of beautiful work that's actually come out of this time. We've all found a way to still dance together. I think it's important also at some point in your life, you were given so much and it's time for you to give back. Also, I think I learned so many wonderful things. One of my teachers was a student of Ravel. So I feel I have a direct connection to Ravel. I have things she told me and I want to pass all of that along to the next generations. My first lesson um, with Mr. Thibaudet, first time I met him, um, I had so much admiration for his musicianship, for his artistry already. And so I got to play for him and I even got to play with him and it was just such a wonderful experience. You know how sometimes you feel that you have an old soul in, in a young person, you wonder where, where is it coming from? You don't really understand where it's coming from. Well, it is there and that's certainly the case with Bennett. <laughs> And then he came around to the piano and he started asking me questions and telling me things that it would just, we just had a relation. It was just like two artists together. And we, and we came up all together with the idea of doing A Présent Rêve from Forêt, which is a really heartbreaking, beautiful, beautiful piece. It's originally for voice, obviously, piano and voice. It's a, it's a leader, it's a song. Uh, and I think the cello is what I kept telling Bennett. I said, you know, you're lucky. The cello is probably the closest instrument to the human voice. Nothing comes close to the human voice, but certainly not the piano. And he had that voice and he sings with his cello. Dance makes music visible. With the dancer's body, you can see the music right happening right in front of your eyes and without music there would be no dance they're inseparable
My first class here was a family tap dance, I think. I was two years old. I took a tap dance class with my dad. And then when I was three or four, I started studying piano here. And I've been here ever since. I've taken music theory, I've taken guitar, I've done chamber music here in the community school, and now I'm in the conservatory. When I first received the call to work with Mr. Whitaker, I was ecstatic. And my parents were just amazed that I could work with such an incredible musician and composer. It didn't really hit me until I saw him in person and realizing that he's actually a normal person and was the most encouraging conductor. It was a huge honor for me with him and incredible experience. The students that I've worked with here at Colburn have been, to a person, fantastic musicians, subtle, delicate, interesting, unique artists, but more than anything, they're just lovely people. Every single student I've worked with has just been a lovely person. I can't tell you how far that goes when you're just trying to make music together. You know, when you're trying to bridge that strange divide between human beings and find this way of communicating. It's a joy every time I'm here. A couple of things now, Sam. So even at the beginning, if you could play... Ten years ago, we made our very first virtual choir. And each successive virtual choir has gotten larger and larger, more complex. The last one we did had 8,400 singers from 120 countries. But this was four years ago. And I really thought that would probably be the last virtual choir we did. It was about deep space, and you think, what more is there to say than, than our known universe? But with the, with the COVID-19 crisis and everybody being separated from each other, I was inspired to write a new piece and to bring everybody back together one more time. Music has this ineffable power to reach across these vast distances and speak directly to our hearts. There's something about the amount of emotional information that is conveyed in the human voice that for me is magical and is a kind of medicine. It's the kind of medicine that you really need during a crisis like this.
we're not only a conservatory and a pre-college program, we also have a community school. The entire school is around every level of musician, from beginner to professional. Also, what's an amazing opportunity for conservatory students is we have a chance to work and teach. It really makes you think how far and how hard every musician has come and how passionate they are about the art. And that's what I think Colburn School embodies, is everyone here is here for one reason, and that's to pursue art and to do something they're passionate about. And so our sound has to be uh, appropriately sort of nesting inside the lower octave of the basses, so that means... We As humans, we're always in a little bit of a situation like the, the pandemic has now provoked so radically. It's music that can actually transport us into another sphere and save us from disaster. I just see this pandemic as an additionally heightened obstacle to what the obstacles in that respect would normally be anyway. The way forward is always despite, or rather in spite of all the hindrances. Uh, if, you, if you take that upon yourself and still try to lift the, the curtain a little bit and look behind or, or try to explore what's behind that curtain that holds our world together. And you're still willing to do that. Despite everything, that's the way forward.
What they did in Tippett Rise, they brought nature and art together in a way that is an experience to be there. But you have to be there when they're doing music.